Amber Heard after the verdict. You're here. Some people might ask, why? Are you brave? Are you reckless? Are you vindictive? Why did you want to do an interview? The one thing I can tell you is, um, one thing I'm not is vindictive. I mean, there's no part of me that sees any, um, <laughs> this would be a really lousy way to get vengeance. What do you hope to get across here? You've had everything said about you. What do you wish people knew? You know, Savannah, as silly as it is to say this out loud, my goal, the only thing I can hope for at this point, is just want people to see me as a human being. Tonight, we talk with Amber Heard, the woman at the center of one of the most sensational media spectacles in recent memory. This is a case about the impact of Amber Heard's words on Johnny Depp. For six weeks, millions of viewers around the world were glued to their screens, hanging on every moment of this courtroom slugfest between Hollywood stars. The next move was just a bang, and just a, she clocked me in the jaw. It just hit me over and over and over again, and I thought, this is how I die. The trial made public a volatile marriage, with private moments caught on tape. I was hitting you. It was not punching you. Babe, you're not punched. For some people, they just were frankly disgusted by the whole thing and don't have much sympathy for either one of you. Can you understand that? Absolutely. I can understand that. I would not blame the average person for looking at this and how it's been covered and not think that it is Hollywood brats at their, at their worst. I but what people don't understand is it's, it's actually so much bigger than that. This is, a, this is not only about our First Amendment right to speak. But here's the thing about the First Amendment. The First Amendment protects free speech. It doesn't protect lies that amount to defamation. And that was the issue in the case. Yes, exactly. Free speech does not protect you if you, you know, go into a crowded theater and you scream fire. We get the concept of free speech from the Greeks. But my understanding of what that means is not just the freedom to speak. It's a freedom to speak truth to power. But truth is the word. Yes. And that was the issue. And that's all I spoke. So how did it all come to this? See you down the road. Amber Laura Heard grew up outside Austin, Texas, with big dreams of Hollywood stardom. After moving to Los Angeles at the age of 17, she booked a string of TV and movie roles. In 2009, she got a call that would change her life. It was from superstar Johnny Depp, Here. who wanted her to co-star with him in a film called The Rum Diary. In 2018, she landed her biggest role yet in Aquaman. That same year, as the Me Too movement was in full swing, she wrote this now infamous op-ed for The Washington Post. It included a key line, I became a public figure representing domestic abuse. You said many times you just wanted to go on with your life. When you wrote the op-ed, it raised all of this again. Why did you do that if you wanted to just go on and put this past you? The, the, because the op-ed wasn't about my relationship with Johnny. But it alluded to him. It, it was that, unmistakable. You know, what the op-ed was about was... Um, you know, me loaning my voice to a bigger cultural conversation that we were having at the time. It was about reforms, uh, legislative reforms, uh, renewing the Violence Against Women Act. Did you worry, gosh, I'd love to be a person weighing in on these cultural issues, but that's gonna stir this all up again? You know, that, that's a, a great question and one that I wish was considered more seriously because it's important. When you wrote this op-ed, it was the height of Me Too, legions of powerful men being canceled, losing their jobs. Did you want that to happen to Johnny Depp? Of course not. It wasn't about him. Johnny Depp disagreed and filed a $50 million defamation lawsuit against her. Good morning. Good morning. She countersued, all of which led to the recent showdown in court. I don't have to remind you that you've been found liable for defamation against Johnny Depp. Having been found liable, are you nervous as we are here today about what you can say now? Of course, I took for granted what I assumed was my right to speak, not just about what I lived through, but what I knew. Do you feel like you could be sued again by him for defamation? I'm terrified, which is what I guess a defamation lawsuit is meant to do. It's meant to, <laughs> to take your voice. When we come back, Inside the Allegations. She has a need for conflict. She has a need for violence. The Depp team argued that you were the abuser, that you instigated physical violence.
I never had to instigate it. I responded to it. As I testified to, if it meant the difference between a broken nose or a, a, a sore cheek, I would do it. People lined the streets waiting for a glimpse of them, these two movie actors. Their cars pulling up not to a red carpet, but to a Virginia courthouse. What did you see out the window of that car? Every single day, I passed city blocks lined with people holding signs saying things that I couldn't repeat on television. And they had to establish barricades to protect me so I could drive into a protected entrance of the courthouse. Every single day, that's how I walked in the court. There were more people waiting for her inside, packing the courtroom and watching from home. Amber's lawyers had fought to keep TV cameras out, but lost. I didn't want this to be a thing. I didn't want it to be a trial. I didn't want it to be a part of the public record. But when someone sues you, you don't really have a choice. With the burden of proof on him, Johnny Depp made his case first. To prove defamation, his lawyers needed to show that Amber's claims of abuse were false and had hurt his career. Mr. Depp, have you ever physically assaulted Ms. Heard? Never. Have you ever sexually assaulted Ms. Heard? Never. Certainly not. What have you lost as a result of Ms. Heard making these allegations against you? Nothing less than everything. Depp said there was an abuser in the courtroom, but it wasn't him. It was Amber. She has a need for conflict. She has a need for violence. It erupts out of nowhere. Depp described a particularly violent fight they had when he was filming in Australia. He said Amber threw a vodka bottle at him. And it made contact and shattered uh, everywhere. And then I looked down and realized that the, the, the tip of my finger had been severed. Depp's attorney showed the jury photos of injuries they said Amber had inflicted on Depp and asked members of his security staff to tell the jury what they'd seen. I heard and saw a closed fist um, contact Mr. Depp in the left side of his face. And whose fist was that? That was Miss Heard's fist, Amber Heard's fist. The Depp team argued that you were the abuser, that you instigated physical violence, did you? I never had to instigate it, I responded to it. When you're living in violence and it becomes normal, as I testified to, you have to adapt, you adopt strategies to cope with it. If, and if it meant, as I testified to, if it meant the difference between a broken nose or a, a, a sore cheek, I would do it. What about the witnesses who said they have seen you instigate physical violence? Did they all come in and lie in court? I'm, you know, less interested in sitting here, you know, relitigating it with you. I am not here to call any of his witnesses any names. I'm not here to do that. I'm, I'm here to just kind of talk about it from yeah. what it felt like for me as a person who sat there. There was one more voice Depp's legal team wanted the jury to hear, Amber's. They had audio recordings of the couple talking about how Amber sometimes got physical. I smack my ear again. Resounds in my fucking In another recording, Amber was less apologetic. I'm sorry I hit you like this, but I did not punch you. I did not deck you. I was hitting you. There are tapes in which you acknowledge hitting. There are tapes in which you say, I started the fight. I know much has been made of, of these audio tapes. And as I testified on the stand, what you would hear in those clips are not evidence of what was happening. It was evidence of a negotiation of how to talk about that with your abuser. But I am looking at a transcript that says, he says, you start physical fights and you say, I did start a physical fight. I did start a physical fight. Yeah, you did. That you're just telling me today, I never started a physical fight. And here you are on tape saying you did. As I testified on the stand about this, is that when your life is at risk, not only will you take the blame for things that you shouldn't take the blame for, but when you're in an abusive dynamic, psychologically, emotionally, and physically, you don't have the luxury of saying, hey, this is black and white, because it's anything but when you're living in it. He says he never hit you. Never. Is that a lie? Yes, it is. He says he's never struck any woman. His lawyers argued at trial. None of his other prior relationships, not one woman has come forward and said he physically hit them. You were the only one. Look what happened to me when I came forward. 